Cinderella Once upon a time, a rich man's wife died. So he decided to marry again. So that his lonely daughter would have a mother to care for her. But the woman he chose to marry was a proud and selfish woman with two daughters just like herself. She did not show her true character until after the wedding. She ordered her daughter to work in the kitchen while she and her daughters enjoyed themselves. When the child had done her work, she used to sit in the chimney corner among the cinders or the ash. So everyone called her Cinderella. Her clothes were dirty and torn, yet she was far prettier than her sisters. One day the king invited them for a party. The sisters were very happy. They kept on talking what they would wear and ordered beautiful gowns. Cinderella also wanted to go, but her sisters teased her and said, Would you not like to dress up in fine clothes and ride in a carriage, dance with a rich young man, or maybe even with the prince himself? <laughs> it was known that the prince was in search of a wife, and Cinderella's stepmother had high hopes for her daughters. Soon the great day arrived. Cinderella was busy all day, dressing her sisters and combing their hair. And when the beautiful carriage arrived to take them to the ball, she arranged their dress so that they would not get shapeless on the way. When the sisters had left, Cinderella began to cry. <laughs> Suddenly, her very grandmother appeared and said, Why are you crying, my dear? I wish I could go to the party, cried Cinderella. Her very grandmother told her that she would go. She told Cinderella to get her a pumpkin. Cinderella was puzzled. But she quickly brought the largest pumpkin that she could find. Her fairy grandmother waved her magic wand and turned the pumpkin into a beautiful golden carriage. Cinderella was then sent to find six mice, a rat, and six lizards. The fairy grandmother turned the six mice into smart grey horses, the rat into a handsome coachman, and the six lizards into smart footmen. Then she waved her magic wand over Cinderella, and soon her dirty dress became the most beautiful dress ever seen. Cinderella also saw that her feet a beautiful pair of golden slippers. The fairy grandmother now told Cinderella to go immediately and leave the palace before the clock struck twelve, as the magic would end at midnight.
When Cinderella appeared in the dance room, everyone became silent, and the music and dancing stopped. She was the most beautiful young woman in that room. The young prince took her hand. and led her to the dance floor. He danced with no one else but her the whole evening. When they sat down for their dinner, the prince could hardly eat anything as he was so busy looking at her. The dance went on. Cinderella was very happy. She danced every dance and did not at all feel tired. Then she heard a clock striking the hour. She thought it must be midnight. She became afraid and ran away from the dance room. The prince tried to catch up with Cinderella. As she ran towards the golden carriage in her hurry, she lost one of her lovely golden slippers. As the prince bent down to pick up the golden slipper, the clock struck twelve. When the prince stood up, he saw that his beautiful dance partner, her fine coach, and the horses were missing. Now the prince was in no mood to celebrate, and all the guests were told to leave. The prince took the golden slippers to the king and told him that he wanted to find the beautiful maiden whose foot the slipper fitted. When he found her, he will marry her. The prince now went to every house in the entire kingdom to look for Cinderella. Cinderella's stepmother grew very excited when the prince arrived at their house. She was shown the golden slipper. She told her daughters to try to put on the slipper. But they could not do so as they had big clumsy feet and the golden slipper was tiny and delicate. The prince asked her if there was any other young woman in that house. The stepmother replied that only Cinderella was there and she worked in the kitchen and did not go to the party. The prince ordered the stepmother to bring Cinderella there. When Cinderella put on the slipper, it fit her pretty foot. Prince had now found the girl he wanted to marry. He took Cinderella along with him to his palace and married her there. Thus they lived happily ever after.
nightingale. A long time ago, there lived in China a little nightingale who sang beautifully. Since the emperor and his royal courtiers lived in a palace, they did not know anything about the nightingale and its singing. The palace was surrounded by a green forest where the nightingale lived. This nightingale was declared as one of the great marvels of China by writers who wrote the history of China. One day, the emperor of China happened to read one such history book. The emperor exclaimed, Oh! What is this? I have no knowledge about such a nightingale in my empire. Why has no one told me about it? His courtier said, uh, uh, We have never heard of it. The emperor said, It must be brought to my court this evening. If you are not able to do this, then the whole court will be punished. The courtiers, scared on hearing this royal command, quickly went to find the bird. They found a kitchen boy who had heard the nightingale singing. The kitchen boy took the courtiers to the nightingale. It agreed to go with them to the palace. was happy to hear the nightingale's song and the courtiers heaved a sigh of relief. The emperor decided to keep it in his palace. He put the nightingale into a golden cage and appointed twelve servants to look after it. The nightingale sang every day and everyone in China marveled at its beautiful voice. But the nightingale was unhappy. It did not like living in the cage and wanted to go back to the forest, free to live and sing as it chose. One day, the Emperor of China received a golden casket with a gem-studded work of art inside it as a gift from the Emperor of Japan. The Emperor was happy to see the gift. was a clockwork toy nightingale which sang the same song again and again when warmed up. Soon the whole court was busy playing with the toy bird 
and the real nightingale quietly flew back to its home in the forest. It was only after a while that the courtiers found the real nightingale missing from the palace. After this, they placed the toy bird on a silk cushion beside the emperor's bed. The bird sang the same tune many times in a day. One day, a strange incident took place. Some problem arose in the toy bird and it stopped working. Everyone was summoned, including the royal physician, the royal watchmaker and even the lord of the royal bedchamber. But none of them was able to diagnose the problem. When the toy bird stopped singing, the emperor took to his bed. He fell ill and everybody feared that he might die soon. There was silence all around the palace so that the emperor would not be disturbed. Soon the real nightingale came to know about the emperor's condition. One night, it came to the window of the emperor's room. And sang the sweetest song it had ever sung. As soon as the Emperor heard it, he got up from his bed. The next morning, the Emperor was fit and happy. and everyone was surprised to see him so. The emperor asked the nightingale to sing according to its wish. The nightingale agreed and asked him to keep its nightly visits a secret. Shh! This the emperor gladly did. <laughs> 